The data frame is somewhere on the intersection between matrices and lists. To subset a data frame, you can thus use subsetting syntax from both matrices and lists. On the one hand, you can use the single brackets from matrix subsetting, while on the other hand, you can also use the double brackets and dollar sign notation that you use to select list elements. We'll continue with the data frame that contains some information on five persons. Have another look at this definition here. Let's start with selecting single elements from a data frame. To select the age of Frank, who is on row 3 in the data frame, you can use the exact same syntax as for matrix subsetting. Single brackets with two indices inside. The row, index 3, comes first, and the column, index 2, comes second. Indeed, Frank is 21 years old. You can also use the column names to refer to the columns, of course. Just as for matrices, you can also choose to omit one of the two indices or names to end up with an entire row or an entire column. If you want to have all the information on Frank, you can use this command. The result is a data frame with a single observation, because there has to be a way to store the different types. On the other hand, to get the entire age column, this command will work. Here, the result is a vector, because columns contain elements of the same type. Subsetting the data frame to end up with a sub-data frame that contains multiple observations also works out as you'd expect. Have a look at this command that selects the age and parenting information on both Frank and Cat. All of these examples show that you can subset data frames exactly as you did with matrices. The only difference occurs when you specify only one index inside people. In the matrix case, R would go through each column from left to right to find the index you specified. In the data frame case, you simply end up with a new data frame that only contains the column you specified. This command, for example, gives the age column as a data frame. I repeat, a data frame, not a vector. But why so? Let me talk about subsetting data frames with list syntax and it'll all become clear. Remember when I told that a data frame is actually a list containing all vectors of the same length? This means that you can also use the list syntax to select elements. Say, for example, you typed people dollar sign age. The age vector inside the data frame gets returned, so you end up with the age column. Likewise, you can use the double brackets notation with a name or with an index. In all cases, the result is a vector. You can also use single brackets to subset lists, but this generates a new list containing only the specified elements. Take this command for example. The result is still a data frame, which is a list, but this time containing only the age element. This explains why before, this command gave a data frame instead of a vector. Again, using single brackets or double brackets to subset data structures can have serious consequences. So always think about what you're dealing with and how you should handle it. Once you know how to correctly subset data frames, extending those data frames is pretty simple. Sometimes you'll want to add a column, a new variable, to your data frame. Other times it's also useful to add new rows, so no observations to your data frame. To add a column, which actually comes down to adding a new element to the list, you can use the dollar sign or the double square brackets. Suppose you want to add a column height, the information of which is already in a vector height. This call or this call will do the trick. You can also use the cbind function that you've learned to build and extend matrices. It works just the same for data frames. To add a weight column in kilograms, for example, you can use this line. If cbind works, then surely rbind will work fine as well. Indeed, you can use rbind to add new rows to your data frame. Suppose you want to add the information of another person, Tom, to the data frame. Simply creating a vector with a name, age, height, etc. won't work, because a vector can't contain elements of different types. You'll have to create a new data frame containing only a single observation and add that to the data frame using rbind. Let's call this mini data frame Tom. Now we can use rbind to bind people and Tom together. Wait, what? R throws an error. Names do not match previous names. This means that the names in people and Tom do not match. We'll have to improve our definition of Tom to make the merge successful. Now, rbind will work as you'd want it to work. 
So adding a column to a data frame is pretty easy, but adding new observations requires some care. Last but not least, there are also ways of reordering your data frame. This comes down to reshuffling the order of the observations in your data frame to get some more insight in your data. Suppose you want to sort the data frame by age, such that the youngest person is on top and the oldest on the bottom. How would this work? A first guess would be to use the sort function, which sorts a vector into ascending or descending order. Let's experiment a bit with this and sort the age column. What gets returned is an ordered version of the age column. Looks nice, but it's not really what we need. There's not a clear way in which we could use these values to change the ordering of the rows in a data frame. Instead of the sort function, we'll need the order function to help us out. Let's test the order function on the age column. Order returns a vector ranks with the rank position of each element. To see what this means, let's print the age column and try to reproduce the result. So, the lowest value in the age column is 21. It's in third position. This index, 3, thus comes first in the ranks vector. The second lowest value in the age column is 28 and is in first position in the age column. The index 1 thus comes second in the ranks vector. The highest value is 39, at the fourth position in the age column. This index comes in the last place in ranks. Make sense? The ranks vector contains indices that are now used to perform a selection in a scrambled order, such that the result is an ordered data frame. Cool, right? To sort in descending order, you can set the decreasing argument in the order function to true. These were just the basics on data frame subsetting and manipulation. Know that there are tons of packages out there, such as Datatable and Dplyr, that will help you manipulate, filter, merge and sort your data frames. Head over to the exercises and become a data frame hero.